just close your eyes and imagine that you are on a flight a flight from Delhi to Chicago cruising at 35,000 miles 50,000 feet above sea level and crossing the Atlantic when suddenly the plane starts rocking and bouncing around and a voice comes crackling through the microphone good afternoon ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking unfortunately we have run into turbulent weather and the turbulence is likely to go on for another 20 25 minutes but not to worry everything is under control passengers please go to your seats and fasten your seat belts and after a pause the voice comes back I'm your captain by the way I happen to be blind five years ago Miles Hilton Barber flew a twin seated aircraft from London to Sydney he happened to be blind it was nearly 25 years ago that my wife and I visited a school for the blind at New Delhi what I saw over there was shocking and stunning the services were poor the facilities were substandard and the curriculum was watered down I asked some of the teachers as to what is the future of these children and the reply I got was that some of them make it to university many of them struggle on the wayside that is when I realized ladies and gentlemen that I was fortunate I was blessed I was born into a family where my parents saw my potential and invested in me gave me a great education gave me all the opportunities that were required that got me to where I am today I made a decision that day I told myself that I'm going to take time out of my life to do things and work with people like me. I wanted to share my knowledge, my experience, my talent, my networks with people like me. I gave up my job in an advertising company. I started taking up freelance jobs and my wife, who's a qualified horticulturist, started working. Now, to begin with, I started traveling the length and breadth of India. I started meeting organizations working with the blind. I also started going to schools for the blind and spent time with people who had spent years working with the domain of life with blindness. It was during one of these journeys that I went down to Dehradun and visited the National Institute for the Visually Handicapped. And I was standing at their guest house when one morning I was woken up by the loud sound of cricket commentary. Kapil Dev moves into bowl to Sunil Gavaskar. And like a good Indian, I'm a passionate cricket lover myself. I jumped out of bed, off I went to the ground, and I saw a bunch of blind kids playing cricket, believe it or not. The bowling was accurate, the batting was skillful, the fielding was athletic, and of course, the wicket keeper. Loud, passionate commentary, never mind the accuracy. The physical training instructor later on told me that the ball was made of hard plastic with ball bearings inside. It made a rattling sound when in motion. He also told me that the game was played with a lot of audio clues that the players gave each other. The batsman, the bowler, the wicketkeeper, the fielders. And these kids woke up in the morning, played cricket. Went for breakfast, came back and played cricket. Went for classes, came back and played cricket. Had lunch came back and played cricket. Only bad light would stop play. That too because the umpires could see no more. Four things I realized at that point of time. Number one, these kids obviously enjoyed the sport and could play it. Therefore, cricket was a great platform for recreation for the blind. Number two, I'm going to take some liberty and misquote Shakespeare over here. I believe that all the world is a playing arena and all of us are playing the game of life. It occurred to me that cricket as a game had a lot to offer the blind, to teach it life skills, to give them an attitude, give them the confidence, give them the discipline. In short, it was a powerful tool for rehabilitation. Number three, when two or three people are playing cricket, crowds will be there. So cricket, I believe, would offer a very, very powerful, effective medium to project and communicate ability to the people around. And lastly, fourthly, 
I saw cricket for the blind going national and international. Well, it was action time. I had found my project. I decided to promote cricket for the blind. In 1996, uh, at Del New Delhi, we organized an international conference on blind cricket. Members and representatives from all the cricket playing countries, the test playing countries at that time, eight, gathered together. We met for two days. The easiest decision was to form the World Blind Cricket Council. But the tough decision was to standardize the rules of play, the ball that will be used. The second decision that we took at that conference was to standardize the rules of play and the ball. And the third decision was that India will host its first ever World Cup in November 1998. And come 1998, the Kanishka World Cup did happen. Seven countries participated. South Africa won the World Cup, defeating Pakistan in the finals. And the President of India was there to give away the prizes. 1998, we also started a second activity. Workshops with visually impaired people in communication skills and personality development. We did about 45 to 50 of these workshops over the next two years. And along with the cricket and the workshops, I had the opportunity of engaging with different sections of our community, with people from the government, people from politics, people from the bureaucracy, people from the community, family members of people who are disabled, and blind people themselves. And one conclusion that I drew was, the real problem is not the blindness, it is the way we think. It is the mindset. When it comes to the politician, they had absolutely no idea as to what can be done with blind people. Ignorance. When it comes to the bureaucracy, I'd like to give you a small example. A colleague and I went to the office of a bureaucrat in one of the states of India. Uh, we had a dry fist meeting. We walked in and first thing we did was we opened our laptops and started taking notes while he started talking. And the guy says, Mr. Abraham, I thought you were blind. I said, yes, I am visually impaired. I can't see. But how come you're working on a computer? So I said, there's something called screen reading software. The screen reading software enables a blind person to work on a computer the blind way, which is you gentlemen and ladies would work on a computer by looking at the screen. I would work on a computer by listening to the screen. Uh, all, all programs of the Microsoft Office suite, surf the internet, do whatever you do, I do. So the bureaucrat then asked us, can this be introduced in our state? Won't the students of our universities and colleges who are blind be benefited by this? I said, sure. Now, this is not an exceptional case. This is true with many, many of the bureaucrats across the country. It is bureaucrats who work with the Social Justice and Empowerment Ministry. After spending six months, they get to know a little bit about disability. Otherwise, the knowledge of blindness they take decisions about policy, they take decisions about programs, not knowing the B of blindness or the D of disability. So, comes to the ophthalmologist. We have a help desk and we, have, we get calls from ophthalmologists. We've got two of them so far. One was a lady who called up and said, look, I have a two-year-old son. He's blind. How do I deal with his milestones? So, we gave him the spiel as to what needs to be done. Then I said, what do you do, ma'am? And she said, I am an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor. There you go. So ophthalmologists are trained in delivering cataract, dealing with glaucoma. But when it comes to irreversible eye condition, they're as good or as bad as you and I. When a child is born blind, it's a mom it's moment of depression, disappointment. They do a lot of medical shopping, seeing how the eyesight can be reversed. Very often when they actually realize that nothing can be done, probably the child is already 10 years old. 10 years of life gone for a six. So parents, family members, again, ignorant. We have done so many workshops and interacted closely with them on, during cricket matches. Their knowledge levels very, very limited. The world thinks they are good for nothing. They themselves think they're good for little. So we decided to set up a knowledge resource that would address the mindset issue. We believed that it is time that we change the mindset and in the process change the conversation re related to life with blindness. Because 
I believe that every blind person in our country is a potential resource and they need to be invested in. I just like to share with you the names of a few people I met in my lifetime. When we were doing the World Cup, there was a gentleman who called me up and said, look, uh, sir, my name is George, uh, my name is Siddharth Sharma and I would like to come and meet you. So I said, sure. So the guy came over and he said, we, uh, I heard the ad on television that the World Cup was going to happen in November 1998. And he said that uh, I would like to get involved. So I said, how do you lose your eyesight? So he said, I had an accident when I was 22 years old. I met with the accident. The next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital and I couldn't see. 15 years of my life went by not knowing what to do. I'm a cricket lover and I saw the ad and I'm here. So I said, Siddharth, pick up the telephone, start speaking to the media. Talk to them about the cricket event and tell them what is going to happen and that they should promote it, they should write about it. So he said, sure, and uh, he had somebody who read out the numbers, he started calling one after the other, one after the other. And then I told him, Siddharth, please go to the schools in Delhi and speak to the children about the World Cup. He said, sure, and he started doing that. At the end of the World Cup, the PR agency that worked for us came to me and says, Mr. Abraham, you know, there's this guy, Siddharth Sharma. Do you think we can offer him a job? I said, sure, please go ahead. So Siddharth Sharma joined that PR company. He worked with them for four years and then started his own PR company. And today, ladies and gentlemen, he's completed more than 10 years of public relations activity. And whenever I need PR, he doesn't do free for me. I have to pay for it. <laughs> there are chartered accountants who are blind. There is Santosh Rungta, who practices in the Delhi High Court. Now, all these people are blind. But blindness has not come in the way of their progress in life. And they are contributing members of the Indian economy. So, we started this knowledge resource, as I told you, Iway. Now, Iway comprises of, um, number one, a website. Number two, we produce a radio program which is broadcast from 30 cities of India. Number three, we have um, SMS alert service. And number four, we have um, training programs where we actually do face-to-face -face training with people. We have counseling services. And then we also do talking books. The whole idea is to share information with people. And with the sharing of the information, suddenly we realize that people have started calling us up. We have a help desk. I would like to conclude with just one statement. The statement is, you've seen so many stories of people who have done well in life. It's time we looked at blind people as a potential resource of our country. And it's very important that we invest in them rather than look after them, protect them, and provide for them. Thank you.